Back in 1962, a secret group of these men planned to kill this man due to events in this nation. Of course, we know the plot didn't succeed, but it did lead to two things. A deadly wave of right-wing violence in France, and one of the best political thrillers ever made. Welcome to Waltz Flick's Picks. This time, we look at the Day of the Jackal from 1973. What's the background of the story, and why is it a must-see? Based on the bestseller by Frederick Forsyth, it's a movie with a strange hook. A film where you know the killer must fail, but you're dying to see how he'll be stopped. As I mentioned, the story grew out of real events. Let's take a quick look at them. Charles de Gaulle, free French leader of World War II, became president of that country in 1958. When he did, many French, and especially those in the army, felt he was the second coming. The outgoing government was very unpopular. Worse still, many felt betrayed when it surrendered the colony of French Indochina, now Vietnam. France withdrew after losing the Battle of Dien Bien Phu, which ended an eight-year war. But now, de Gaulle would make France great again. And a main focus was Algeria. France had controlled the North African nation since 1830. Many Europeans lived there, and many considered it just another part of France. Of course, many Algerians did not. Their War of Independence started in 1954. It was a brutal conflict. It was marked by bombings, torture, and assassinations on both sides. That war ended in 1962, when de Gaulle shocked his backers by granting independence to Algeria. French citizens and landowners, the so-called Pied Noir, fled. Colonial troops and officers were outraged. They formed a group called the Secret Army Organization, and Charles de Gaulle was marked for death. Now, there were many plots against de Gaulle, but the movie opens with a tense sequence that shows a real attack from 1962. Twelve men machine gunned de Gaulle's speeding car. They fired about 150 rounds, but the president escaped. And by the way, in the movie we're told that nobody was killed in this attack, but in reality, two motorcycle guards were fatally shot. Also of interest, the skill of de Gaulle's driver got lots of praise, and so did his sturdy car a Citroën. Some years later, when Fiat was trying to buy the automaker, de Gaulle helped block the sale and kept the firm in France. Back in the movie, the failed plot drives the head conspirators into hiding, where they start on a new plan. This is where real life ends and Forsyth's masterful fiction begins. Briefly, the plotters decide to hire a secret top assassin. French security services uncover the plot and start an international manhunt to get the killer. The game of cat and mouse begins. So, this movie has a lot of aspects that make it work. First, it's a police procedural, and it shows all the person power and hard work taken to deal with the crisis. Now, making this more fun these days is seeing an investigation set in a time before computerized records. It's fascinating to watch the armies of cops and officials plow through documents and files and paper and border checks, all in a desperate hunt for this elusive jackal. And it's a great looking movie. It's shot on location in France, London, and Italy, with no expenses spared. We'll touch on, we'll touch on that again when we look at the director. And as for the story, it offers a tense chess game between two very intelligent men, which in a way, reminds me of the TV series Columbo. You have a soft-spoken, rumpled detective named LaBelle. He's feeding pigeons the first time we see him. And he's up against this mysterious, suave psychopath, a man who kills without batting an eye. It's always more enjoyable watching crime stories with a sharp battle of wits. And that's what we get here. And there's that strange appeal of watching the cold professionalism of the jackal himself. He's skilled at changing identities, and he's always one step ahead of the police. His real identity remains a total mystery, but he's brilliant, relentless, 
and ruthless as he travels towards Paris to execute his plan. You add in the historical background, and finally it's all wrapped up in tons of suspense. What will the Jackal do next, and can they ever stop him? One of the great pleasures of this movie is how wonderful it looks, and the realism offered by shooting on location. A lot of this was due to the reputation of director Fred Zinnemann. He got his start in the movies as an extra way back in the 1930s in All Quiet on the Western Front, but by the 1970s he was cinematic royalty. Zinnemann directed Gary Cooper to a Best Actor Oscar in the classic western High Noon. He made From Here to Eternity, which swept the Oscars in 1954 and won Best Picture. He made A Man for All Seasons, which swept the Oscars in 1967 and won Best Picture and Best Director. In total, he directed six movies that were Best Picture nominees. It's little wonder that in all the posters for The Jackal, Zinnemann's name is in big letters. Zinnemann was A-list all the way, and often filmed in historic locations. Day of the Jackal was no exception. Working with producer John Wolfe, best known for Best Picture Oliver, Zinnemann gained amazing access. The French government allowed him to film in Notre Dame, all around Paris, in the Riviera, and other parts of France. The French also provided real security vehicles and men. Most impressively, Zinnemann was allowed to film during a real major military parade in Paris. This adds a great deal of, of spectacle and documentary-like realism to the story's suspenseful climax. <laughs> The Jackal has a lot of great moments. The finale is impressive, filmed during a massive national parade. But I hate spoilers, so we won't go there. Instead, here's a quiet scene that's a favorite with fans and reviewers. In it, we see the Jackal visiting a specialist in quality weapons for secret missions. As always, Cyril Cusack is great as the soft smoking gunsmith. And it's fascinating and chilling to watch the pair chat about the deadly mission with dispassionate professionalism. By the way, the character of the gunmaker was changed to an Italian in the movie, while in the book he was a skilled Belgian who had formerly worked for the FN Arms Company. And the most chilling detail? As the pair chat, you see a magazine on the table. And on the cover is a picture of JFK. And lastly, there must be a silencer and, of course, a telescopic sight. Mm. Over what range will you fire? I'm not sure yet, but probably not more than 400 feet. Will the gentleman be moving? Stationary. Will you go for a head shot or a chest shot? Probably head. Now let's talk a bit about the stars. Edward Fox starred in this film because he wasn't a star, but his portrayal of the ruthless jackal turned him into one. When planning the film, Zinnemann decided against names like Michael Caine or Roger Moore in favor of an unknown. He said he wanted to make the Jackal more mysterious and anonymous. The choice against a big star probably hurt the movie's box office a little, but it certainly propelled Fox's career. Fox, elder brother of actor James Fox, was born in upscale Chelsea in London. For a short time, he was an officer in the famous Coldstream Guards. But the story is that he threw his commanding officer into a lake and was turfed. Ironically, after Jackal, Fox became known for playing officers and aristocrats. He was Tank General Horrocks in A Bridge Too Far and took a turn as M in the Thunderball remake Never Say Never Again. Inspector LaBelle, the man out to stop the Jackal, was played by Michael Lonsdale. He had an interesting background the son of a British officer and a Franco-Irish mother. He was born in Paris and grew up in Morocco. Lonsdale began acting in France in the 1950s and, and was in Truffaut's classic The Bride War Black. But it was the role as the quiet detective in Jackal that expanded his career internationally. He also made a bond playing bad guy Drax in Moonraker. Later, 
He was the soft-spoken mentor in Ronan. Popular French star Delphine Searing was perfectly cast as Colette. She's the worldly and aristocratic woman who shelters the jackal when he's on the run. Searing came to prominence in the art house favorite last year at Marienbad and often played confident, in-control women. And she was friends with Jackal co-star Michael Lonsdale years before the production. He christened her the actress with the cello voice. And quickly, the Jackal marked an early appearance for Derek Jacoby as LaBelle's assistant. He'd go on to I, Claudius, Cadfile, Gladiator, and much, much more. Now, let's briefly wrap up the real events and touch on companion movies. As our movie shows, the real 1962 attack on de Gaulle failed, prompting the president to say they shoot like pigs. In the aftermath, many arrests followed, and the attack planner, Jean Biestat Thierry, was shot by firing squad. Of note, his execution had the highest security in French legal history, with 2,000 gendarmes guarding the area. Frederick Forsyth, author of The Day of the Jackal, continued writing thrillers that were made into films. These include The Odessa File, The Dogs of War, and The Fourth Protocol. Earlier in life, he'd been a journalist and flew jets in the Royal Air Force. The movie Day of the Jackal spawned some imitators, such as 1997's The Jackal with Bruce Willis and Richard Gere, but it wasn't as successful. If you are looking for a great movie in this genre, try 1975's Three Days of the Condor. This conspiracy laced story has Robert Redford and Faye Dunaway entangled with the CIA, and another secret killer played wonderfully by Max von Sydow. And one more movie to consider due to its casting, its historical setting, and because it cracked the best 250 movies list on IMDb. It's The Battle of Algiers from 1966. This movie tells the story of French colonial forces trying to suppress the independence movement in Algeria. It's dramatic, vast, and so authentic you'd swear you're watching a documentary. It also has an interesting bit of casting. The film's French star is Jean Martin, who plays a tough paratroop colonel out to stop the insurgents. Seven years later, Martin had a small but key role in Day of the Jackal, playing a member of the secret faction out to kill de Gaulle. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed that. If you're interested in seeing Day of the Jackal, and I hope that uh, you are now, uh, you can stream it on Amazon Prime or you can catch it on TCM. If you're enjoying this kind of content on my new channel, please do subscribe to find out about my new videos. And uh, I really invite you to comment about Day of the Jackal, your favorite thrillers, or other movies you'd like me to explore. I hope you come back again to Walt's Flicks Picks.